Hey guys, Paul here from the engineeringmindset.com. In this video, we are going to be looking at the CAV system. CAV stands for constant air volume. CAV is a means of providing HVAC to a building. CAV is also becoming less common in new buildings simply because VAV, variable air volume systems, are replacing them due to the superior zone control and much reduced energy consumption. If you don't know what a VAV system is, I highly recommend you check out our YouTube channel, check out our other videos, and we've got ones covering pretty much every subject. For instance, here we've got the VAV system. Now, although constant air volume systems are becoming uh, less common in new buildings, you might still find them in smaller buildings, um, especially some older ones as well, the existing building stock. Um, but the reason you'll find them in smaller buildings is because they're fairly cheap to install and because they're much simpler to install also. Places like hospitals will sometimes still use these as well, um, just to give zone control for conditioned spaces in the, the operating theatre and you know things like that. So looking at the CAV system, right here we've got a simple model of uh, a small office. As you can see here, we've got the AHU, which is located within the plant room. Then we've got the supply duct here, and that's bringing all the fresh air that's coming in, that's being treated through these various parts in the AHU, and that's being sent off along this main duct here, and then branching off into these diffusers. The air from there is then circulated around the room, and that pushes all the, the dirty used air back up into this grill here, and it's collected in this duct and that's returned back to the return AHU where it can either be dispersed straight out to atmosphere or some of it can be recycled and reused. Now in this video we're not going to be looking inside the AHU to see the components as we've already covered this in other videos. If that is of interest to you then I highly recommend you check out our fundamentals of HVAC where we cover this in great detail. Now CAV systems do have some limitations because their supply air temperature is varied but the supply of the volume supply of air is constant. So while this system runs it provides air at a consistent and constant volume and only the temperature of that air changes. Typically the air is provided at around 13 degrees Celsius, 55 degrees Fahrenheit, but this can be adjusted to suit the needs of the site. Now as I said the volume is constant but the amount of air which it provides is really going to depend on the size of the area that you're con conditioning the air for. And it really depends what's happening inside these rooms, which will dictate how much air needs to be sent to that room. But there are a lot of design guides out there and some standards which will help you to size these in the real world. To give you an idea though, uh, this small room here in the middle, that might have something like 3 cubic meters per second. And these larger rooms on either side, these might have somewhere but you know, around 20 or 30 cubic meters per second. It could be that the entire building only requires 30 cubic meters per second as well. But it can be a lot more than this as well. Say you've got a 40 story building and you've got one enormous AHU on the roof which is pushing the air down through all the building and that's going to be a lot more than that obviously. Now one of the problems with the CAV system is that everything connected to this AHU is classed as one zone. And that means all the rooms connected to it receive the same temperature air regardless of their heat load. So if this room here was a busy meeting room in the middle of summer and it's full of a lot of people, it's going to be generating a lot of heat with all that sun pouring in and all that solar thermal gain. But that will receive the same air temperature as this little room here which might just have one person in it. And that's going to be very uncomfortable for that person. This means the zones are not receiving their required cooling. 
And that means that the system is not efficient because it's going to be wasting a lot of cooling energy in this AHU, providing cooling to a room that doesn't need it. The fans will also run at 100% the entire time this system is running. Although you could fit some VSD, um, some variable speed drives to the motors and lock that in at a lower hertz to get the energy savings. But otherwise to get this system to convert it to a VAV system, it's going to take a lot of time and effort. You have to change a lot of things and modify a lot of the controls for it. But you get what you pay for. Like I said, this the CAV system in this basic form right here is very cheap to install. It's very easy to run as well. From this schematical representation of the CAV system, you can see just how it's connected. If you notice that all the rooms are connected to this main duct here, and the only form of temperature control is in the main AHU there. And that means that all these rooms receive the same tempered air at a constant volume. Just to note there, um, you obviously do not have to return the air um, back into the supply ducts, as I can show you there. Um, this can be just expelled straight out to atmosphere also. But coming back to the rooms, um, this CAV design means that this works very well if all the rooms are of a similar condition or require a similar cooling condition. But if this room here um, is, you know, has a different cooling load, then you're going to have to connect this to a different AHU, maybe a separate one, just for this room. And this is one of the limitations of the CAV system. One way around this is to install these. These are terminal reheaters. These are usually found um, just in a box before the diffuser in the ceiling. And uh, these, can, these are typically um, electrically powered, electrical heaters. They could also be um, from your uh, hot water system. But they will reheat that air up to a higher temperature. But obviously that's very energy inefficient because you're already cooling the air down here and now you're paying again to heat that air back up again to suit these rooms here. So you're wasting money on the cooling and then also on the heating. Typically, the air temperature um, for this type of system is supplied at the coldest which uh, temperature possible and that suits the room with the largest cooling load. So as you can see, this room here um, is going to be the, having the largest cooling load and these two rooms on either side of it, they've, they're the ones with the reheater batteries so they're the ones which, you know, this air is not going to satisfy um, their needs. So they've installed these heater batteries just to heat that air back up a little bit to ensure that perhaps the people inside or the equipment uh, maintains a, you know, a steady temperature which satisfies them. Another option you, can, you might see out in industry is this. This is the dual duct CAV system. This is becoming more and more um, uncommon actually to see this. You, you'll still find it in some older buildings. But basically, you've got two ducts running um, and supplying the room, and one of these will be providing cold air or cool air, and the other duct will be supplying warm air. This air is then mixed with some dampers in a box um, just to suit the temperature inside. That return air is then also. Um, return back into a normal duct there, ready to be recycled or dispersed out to atmosphere. Now this system gives much a much improved uh, thermal control, but there is little control of the humidity. Again, it's not particularly energy efficient either, as you're supplying air through two streams, you've got all that resistance in there, uh, which the fan's gonna have to overcome. You're also unnecessarily heating and cooling um, air which might be mixed um, in here and then the loads will change in that room. If you've got one of these systems and you want to make it more energy efficient then you should ensure that a temperature reset is enabled on the system. You'll need a few advanced control points on there and some temperature measurement sensors but the temperature reset controls um, this will basically monitor the, the air conditions which are required and that will then reduce the air temperature of the hot air so bring that temperature down to the lowest acceptable temperature 
um, and also with the cool stream there, the cold, the cold air duct, that's also going to raise that temperature in there to reduce the cooling load provided by this coil, um, and that will raise the temperature up in there to the highest uh, acceptable temperature. Okay, that's the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you found this video interesting and you'd like to see some more of our work. Share it with anyone you think it might be of use to. Any questions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll try as quick as possible to get back to you with an answer. You can also find us on our website, engineeringmindset.com. We're also on Facebook, Twitter and Google+. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you.